Yo, check out this guy Neo Sai. He has some great videos. He honestly started uploading not too long ago. I believe it's been probably five months now. And I've seen his channel grow. He's almost at 100K. Help him out. And he makes some bomb videos. Today, we're going to check out. I played every Naruto Clash and Ninja game in 2022, part two, starting with Clash and Ninja Revolution 2. I'm personally a big fan of Naruto. I have a tattoo on my arm. Played all the Clash and Ninja games, except for the Japanese ones, for obvious reasons. But we'll go ahead and get into it. Naruto Clash of Ninja Revolution, Revolution 2. 2. Was... I really love this game. I, dude, I love the Clash of Ninja series, period. But this game I really, really enjoyed. And their story mode was kind of cool, but the two characters I just really couldn't get into. But I was really excited to finally... Finally plays the Ambu Black Ops for the first time. Oh my god, I was so excited. Released for the Wii in 2008. This is the final game in the series to be set before Shippuden, at least yep. content-wise. Oh my yep. god, we actually have a real Story functional mode. menu. While some of the ordering oh, is still yeah. not quite how I'd personally order it, this is a massive improvement. A neat little touch in the menu is how the images change depending on the mode. Like in the versus mode, the visual changes depending on how many players you're selecting for the mode. It's a subtle change, but it definitely elevates this UI design way above any previous entry for me. Other visual changes are pretty subtle, but I do want Graphics to note that it look looks better. like the effects got a bit of an upgrade like Naruto's Ninetales aura, or the lightning mm. around Sharingan mode Sasuke or Kakashi. Yeah, I would lightning. also say that the special moves are a lot smoother and i think this game is the first game to really start competing with the i thought this was so cool because he said neji is saying how many palms and then he like you see the hit counter the ultimate ninja so games with the special move presentation 64. it's Boom. not quite the same level of craziness but it's pretty close and i enjoyed watching a lot of the moves here in fact i wish this game had a dedicated special move viewer like a few of the ultimate ninja games did before i continue i just need to That'd say clash of ninja revolution 2 and 3 are incredibly great grindy. Unlocking stuff in these games takes a ridiculous amount of just playing matches over and over and over again. I know I that- agree. Clash of Ninja Revolution 1, I remember, on the Wii, I remember looking up on my little, it was like a little, remember back when phones, you like could like slide it sideways and then you lift up on the phone and there'd be like a little keypad. I had that phone. I don't remember what it is, some Verizon phone. And I looked online to see all the characters and I saw you could unlock the fourth Hokage. Till this day, I think that was a, a either one, a myth, or two, that was for the Japanese version only. Let me know, is Minato Namakaze, now that we know that he's Minato, because back then we didn't know who he was. And I assumed he was Naruto's dad. It was said, you have to beat the arcade mode at a super high score on the hardest difficulty. I did it like five different times and I still couldn't unlock the fourth Hokage. It was so crazy. Is that real or no? And this then I saw there was gameplay footage of the fourth Hokage, but it was the Japanese version. I don't think it was Clash of Ninja Revolution 1. I think it was like Budo uh, Tensei, whatever the Japanese version is as a plus for some people but still i feel like it needs to be pointed out because i'm not a big fan so, of grinding. So anyways spammy. gameplay wise this game expands on the gameplay of revolution one while also implementing both gekito ninja tyson that, Four stuff gekito and ninja a tyson. pretty major new that. mechanic first the tag out system from gekito ninja tyson 4 is back but this time you can only have up to two characters two. per team i saw there was like gameplay there was three different characters and i saw the sound four was also on their team i was like what is going on what version of the game is this This isn't bad though and it's the higher fair. paced fights are still here having a tertiary character didn't make i remember when i first saw this transition i immediately was like oh oh Tyson my god four is oh bad. my god but this time you can only have <laughs> i was like like just to see this characters in team. motion and then they just go in and then i believe I was just so excited. I was just pressing buttons, and I believe I did the teleport this one. This isn't bad, though. The teleport one, but the AI knew, and it just, like, turned around real quick, and then, like, we both landed, and it was like, bro, this is so badass. Oh, and the higher-paced fights just turned are still here. here. Having a tertiary character oh, God, didn't make the so experience good. any better, though, so I do think that two is a good number. On top of that, there's a new major mechanic in Paper Bombs. Using a special yeah, button bombs. input, you can either throw or place down Paper oh, Bombs. On when you could also use the Wii Remote, and you could do, like, hand signs with the remote, Wii Remote. I don't remember what they did. I think one increased your chakra. One gave you health regen or something like that, but I never knew the sign, so I would just like do the button, just. <laughs> 
when you throw them, they work like the normal throwables, but, you couldn't but do they it on more the game guards and stagger controller. the opponent completely. You can also place them down, which is essentially just a trap, trap for the opponent. This is neat though, because it means that you have to think for a second before just rushing into the opponent blindly. When you run over a paper bomb, it's the same stagger it's effect, and you're completely open for a follow-up combo. There's one other kind of gameplay change, and that's the hand signs. Apparently, you can use the Wii, remote, the Wii remote and the nunchuck yep. during fights to kind of waggle and make hand signs yep. for abilities and, and I, chakra. I'm gonna be honest, I saw it as infrequent. I saw it so infrequently that I didn't even make a note where it shows up in the footage. Yeah, fuck that. I'm not going to look through all this footage to find a two second clip. Bonuses, but again, that me, feels kind of gimmicky. So I just stuck yeah. with the tried and true trusted GameCube, GameCube controller. controller. Oh, and one last thing. I don't know if this was in the last game and I just missed it or if it's new to this game. But during stage transitions, Ooh. you can actually choose to attack enemies. On top of yeah, that, it looks like that every last stage pretty much has transitions now, which is a great touch. And it makes every stage feel more fun and dynamic to play. Overall, for gameplay, though, I really like the fast. There it is. Hands on. Here. These games have never felt slow or anything, us. but the Turn character around. switching oh, God, is definitely it. a welcome improvement. The modes in this game are broken down a little bit differently thanks to some UI improvements. There's story mode, the versus mode, training, and extras. First, I'm going to talk about the versus mode, since they're not okay. all technically standard versus modes. When you select the versus mode menu, you're given one through four player modes. And a spec Dude, what is this? Awakened Hinata? I used to play uh, 2v2. I'd have Awakened Hinata... Uh, Naruto One Tail, and then I would have Rock Lee in, in his, uh, what, Gate of Light? I think that's the third gate, third or fourth gate. And then I would have, uh, uh, Curse Mark Sasuke, and they would fight each other. Spectator. But also, I hope he talks about it, but the, the music, the OST of this series in general, but Ninja Storm, I'm, Ninja Storm, Clash Ninja Revolution 2 is fucking Fire. mode which is the cpu versus cpu mode. Fire, inside bro. the two through four player modes are a mixture of verses and co-op modes based on the one player modes the one player modes are mission list player versus cpu score attack time attack survival kumite and multi-match mission list which is just a standard mission mode has a lot of missions that can be attempted by any of the characters oh you could also change sasuke's clothes to, to the black one once you beat a mission you're given a rank based on your performance and that rank shows up in the mission list on a per character basis What's cool about some of these missions is that some of them have specific matchup enemies depending on what character you choose, like these rival missions. This means that for most of the matchups, you actually get that character's specific rival and some character-specific dialogue, which is pretty neat. Something I never expected from this mission mode was that while there's only a handful of missions, they still you will know my hatred. Feel more fun and fair because they tell you outright what their difficulty is and exactly what you're getting yourself into. If anything, this is how they should have done the story mode. Break it down into missions and give the win requirements. Stick the cutscenes in between. I would have wholeheartedly preferred that to what we got, but I'm getting ahead of myself. I don't remember how the story mode worked. I think you just play it. I just can't remember. I do know the enemies have like augmented health and stuff like that and like higher poison all of the following modes have either a one versus one or tag in option player versus cpu is the standard versus match with either a two-man squad or a one versus one match score attack is a mode where you fight 10 matches against an assortment of cpus aiming to get the highest score which seems to be based on the number of hits Akashi and remaining was so cool when i found out you could use the sharingan to copy people's specials that made me think kakashi was like Back then, I think he was, I, I thought he was like a B or C tier character all the way up to S just because he could copy someone's spell. Like 80% of the cast is special. He, he couldn't copy Kick a Genkai, I remember that. HP per battle. Time attack mode is the same concept, but the goal is to win as fast as possible. Survival mode works the same as previous games. You fight as many battles as you can for as long as you can, with your HP only restoring a little bit between. Does she show up in the show? Like frequently, the only time I ever saw this character was in this game. And then if you go against uh, Baki and use your special, she says for Hayate. And Hayate, if you guys don't know, he was uh, one of the, was he a Jonin or a Chunin? I don't know, but he was one of the instructors for the, the Chunin exams. And he had a sword and stuff like that. I can't remember if he got, I think he got killed by Baki. That's why she was like for Hayate, but I can't remember. 
between each round. With survival mode, boy, I got a fat ass forehead in this goddamn screenshot. But I actually wanted to point out that this game is the first game in my experience with a really good survival mode. The difficulty slowly ramps up in a way that makes sense. Whereas in previous games, it almost felt like the difficulty just stayed at the lowest baseline difficulty the entire time. Let me see time. some combos, bro. I really bro. felt challenged here, and the Let addition of the tag end character made it way more interesting too. Kumite mode is like a slightly altered version of the Obero mode, which we saw in previous games. In this, you're fighting wave after wave of enemies, but their number increases over time, meaning that eventually you're swarmed by a bunch of enemies all at the same time. I actually like this mode more because it almost feels like you're playing like the super light Dynasty Warriors-esque mode mixed with some Tekken Force. I enjoy this mode quite a bit. Finally, there's Multi-Match, which is just a customizable version of mob battles. You can select up to four Free characters to participate and yeah. break them into either everyone for themselves or into teams. Now on to the story mode. Story mode here... I remember I was young. I would play as Itachi and I'd have uh, Asuma, Kuranai, and Kakashi go against me and I'd play in a hardest difficulty to see if I could win. Either everyone for themselves or into teams. Now I on won. to the story mode. <laughs> story mode here has a massive presentation upgrade above all previous games. Not only do we get both the visual novel style cutscenes and the big static artwork scenes, we also get a right? vast majority yeah, okay. of the scenes with actual 3D models involved. Sure, they just stand around most of the time. I was so excited when I saw this guy. I was like, oh, dude, an Ambu Black Ops member. And then I played as him. I was like, dude, this guy is so fucking cool. He's like, rip it up. He's like, his tattoos are growing and turns into a sword. And I played as her and I was like, this chick fucking sucks. <laughs> but I really like this since it makes the framing of the scenes make a lot more sense. On top of that, this story is a completely original story rather than an adaptation of the final arc of the normal story. Yeah. In this story, an invader has put a bunch of the Not hidden canon. leaf under a sort of mind control genjutsu that causes them to attack their allies. This leads to some pretty interesting character interactions. While I do think it's a shame that Clash of Ninja ends up not actually adapting the final arc of Naruto, it is still cool that we got something original here. However, here's where I tell you the unfortunate reason as to why I, at the end of the day, do not like this game's story mode. The why? fights in every game so far have felt fair for the most part. Even in the last video when I complained about the CPUs reading your inputs, the fights were still technically fair as the CPU could be outsmarted and beaten with some clever movement and usage of the game's mechanics. In uh -huh. this game though, they decided to just, I don't know, do away with fair fights? At certain points in mean? the story- Oh, some yeah, yeah, no, 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 yeah, this fight, this fight was freaking tough. And even though I see your gameplay and I'm like, this is below average gameplay, I'm like, yo, this fight here was tough. It was tough. I don't even know how you beat it. But good work. Fight in this game just have a completely unfair advantage or multiple unfair advantages. The main and it don't help. Lady Tsunade is not really that good of a character in my opinion. One being the inability to be staggered. See, when you get hit in this game, like you're combos. staggered or hit stunned, meaning that you're locked into a combo mm, unless you use a that substitution. That was nice. Unless nice you use bomb. a substitution, you're going to take full It'll damage down, from that brother. combo. Yeah, and they got poise. Substitution. Unless you use a substitution, you're going Look to take full damage from Damn, that combo. Poise. Here, it's though, like, there the are fuck? some enemies who, if you fair. hit them, they can just poise. completely poise. ignore the hits poise. and break your combo. They fair. don't yeah. flinch, they don't stagger, they don't get hit yeah. stunned at all. And they're also oh my God, that move is such so way more aggressive than the AI normal. Gonna do it again. Making oh, some okay. of these fights ridiculously difficult for... Bro, the Kabuto fight was kind of difficult too, not gonna lie. Absolutely no reason other than to seemingly waste your time retrying the harder. fight over and over again. I cannot stand this kind of thing. Sometimes yeah. they even require you to finish off the enemy with specific yes. moves, <laughs> meaning that you occasionally get put into this impossible situation oh where you can't take any more hits, so you need- My favorite Naruto combo is run forward A, I think it was A, B, B, right? So he runs, he pulls out the kunai, does it backwards, and then does a kick, and then does a punch. So is it AAB? Double forward AAB, I think that's what it was. I need your substitution, so but if you so use your substitution. Just to see him turn around with the kunai backwards, bam, that's just hard. You can't use the special move that the mission requires, meaning that you'll probably lose anyways. I know a lot of people probably like this story mode, and outside of this, I actually also like- I like the story, 
but I get your your complaints are valid. The story mode, but I just don't see why they had to go and ruin it like this. These fights just aren't fun to me at all. Anyways, I don't want to linger on why I don't like this mode for too long Trying because to the game guy. itself is bro, good. The gameplay is fun, and there's good stuff here. They just really Going missed to the, the first mark gate, with this bro. story Going mode. To the thanks first to that gate. one little thing they did to ruin Going it. Going to for the me. first Anyways, gate. Anyways, overall, damage. I'm feeling a bit mixed on this game. The changes and additions were all improvements, but the story mode just soured the whole thing for me. The variety of modes here was nice though, and I think the gameplay is just getting better and better as time it goes on. It was. Let's see how the 100%. final Revolution game stacks. Hundred percent was getting way better. I was like, bro, I can't wait to see the next part. Bro, I looked it up on YouTube and I saw the Shippuden character models. I didn't know Shippuden had came out because I was, I didn't have Crunchyroll. Uh, I think by that time, my mom, we we couldn't afford the cable anymore. So the only time I could watch Naruto is when we went to the library and. Back then, you could like rent the the movies or like the the episodes, and they only had like three episodes on the disc, and they gave you like three discs. And I didn't get the Shippuden by then, but then I looked online and I saw the gameplay. I was like, they're older. And then I saw Naruto hit a giant Rasengan because I saw the all the specials. So I was just seeing everybody's special move, and I was like, dude, a giant Rasengan, what? Like what? And then I saw Sasuke. I was like, whoa, why does Sasuke look like that? Like what's what's his clothing? It was so cool. It was crazy. Different, bro, different time. Different time. But fuck this boss fight right here, bro. Fucking one tail Naruto versus Deidara is the hardest goddamn boss I've ever fucking fought. Naruto Shippuden Clash of Ninja Revolution 3 was released for the Wii in 2009. This is the final Clash of Ninja game released. Bro, I thought Sasuke was so fucking cool. I thought he was so fucking cool because he had so many specials. He had the Chidori strain, the normal special. I think he had a... Uh, I, I think he had two normal specials with Chidori Stream. I think he had, I don't know if he still had Phoenix Flower Jutsu, but I fucking thought Sasuke was badass, especially with the sword. Just outside of Japan, okay. meaning that it's the only Shippuden Clash of Ninja game the West got. Visually, this game is about the same as Revolution 2, and there's not a whole lot more I can say about it. It looks good, and I'm not really expecting any huge changes to the aesthetic this late in the series. The models look good, the characters look good, and the effects are Specials solid. Gameplay-wise, this game, again, builds off of the ten previous ten. game. Oh Something my god, Ten Ten, I thought was fucking... When I actually sat and I labbed with Tintin, I was like, this is so cool that she's a stance character, but I wish she had more combos with her stances. Like in Tekken, Lee has four stances and he has like 50, uh, like 50 combos within each stance. Like, why wasn't Tintin given that? The thing specific I want to note, though, <laughs> is that has like five feels moves a lot more per fresh stance. than the last few, because with the time skip, many of the characters now have brand new combos, and they feel mm. a little bit different to play, which is a huge improvement yeah. to me. Believe it or not, some of the main cast were using a nearly identical moveset since the first Clash of Ninja all the way up to this point. The characters just feel better yes. to use this time around. The Ambu combos Kakashi. are a lot How the hell did you unlock Ambu Kakashi for this video? To unlock Abu Kakashi, you had to go through the, I think it was uh, mission mode or score attack mode, and you had to get a certain percentage with each character to unlock Abu Kakashi. Did you use the cheats for this cheat engine? Did you, you emulated this, right? So yeah, that's probably it. Emulated it, all characters. Flash here in the animation. Because are... it takes a minute to get Abu Kakashi, and by then you should have mastered the combos with pretty much every character. But this gameplay don't show in my opinion of higher quality according to what i've read online there's a ton of mechanical changes under the hood and see what i'm saying this game as far as like the balance goes like with frame windows i thought Ambu kakashi was so badass bro even though technically like canonically he's weaker i always thought he was like oh this is way better than normal kakashi even though he's not and all that oh. kind of stuff but i'm a pretty casual bro, player so i wouldn't even know how to the describe special. them let alone yes. be able to i don't know compare them Wait, what was he saying? Like the balance Sorry. goes, like with the frame balance? windows and all that kind of stuff. Oh, but I'm a friends. pretty casual player, so I wouldn't even know how to describe them, let alone be able to, I don't know, compare them. Something else that I read was that there was supposed to have been an addition to the stage transitions. According uh, to what I read online, the transitions are supposed to work two ways now, where you can, I guess, transition again after the- Yes! You can knock them back. The first one, but I couldn't get that to work at all, and I tried every- it's not on every stage. stage. I mean, there some could be stages. some kind of... It's, uh, there's the waterfall stage. Um, 
you can knock him down the waterfall and i think you can go back up. user error or here? you can knock down even more i guess I but i it's never encountered so this at all while playing this even after i went into the training mode to try to force it so the modes in this game are well nearly identical to the ones in the previous game in fact the only new mode here that i can see is the online mode oh, not man. counting the shop so rather than rehash every mode i've already covered i'll just talk about some highlights for starters the story mode returns and covers the first arc of shippuden notably <laughs> this story mode is quite a bit less frustrating than the previous story mode which is fantastic it's almost entirely made up of the 3d cutscenes but still fully voiced i think it's perfectly fine and i enjoyed playing it i did have two things i wanted to point out specifically though first there's a fight where you're guy and you have to fight a clone of guy this fight is very fun to me oh, the because mirror. the clone mirrors your control inputs exactly and you kind of have to come up with a creative way of defeating him it's a pretty interesting concept for a fight and not something that i've seen many games or really any other game in my experience you have to get behind the rock and then jump in here it's due before however i also wanted to address the chio fights chio uses these puppets to fight and while it's a really cool mechanic on paper it leads to some really big issues Conqueror did Conqueror did the same shit did you not play as Conqueror throughout these games? Used with the camera control. Chio's moveset is really creative and has attacks from each puppet controlled by both attack buttons. However, once the puppets get separated from her, it becomes really difficult to understand their relationship to her and by extension the opponent in 3D space. This means that you end up just kind of having to button mash in this fight. It's not the most egregious issue though agree. and I'd still take this over the ridiculously unbalanced fights from the last game. Of course, there are still the requisite- I mean, I just see only one puppet it being used in this entire fight i'm just saying one or two fights with a dramatic difficulty spike that but that's shit, also no, something that, that we've shit. seen before in this series the story you got to use naruto's down special to win this fight not the rasengan the down special where he does the claw swipe that shit does massive damage even if data are poison mode over overall is exactly what i've come to expect and you got to just like avoid those fucking back from this series and the saying goes if it ain't broke don't fix it it's a perfectly serviceable story mode and i enjoyed my time with it so for the first time in the western releases there's online play under the nintendo wi-fi connection in Which this menu there's wi-fi battle mode player data friend roster and rival roster i wasn't able to do the online online matches though unfortunately but the other modes just allow you to see various data i won't linger too much on the online mode but it is nice that it's here this game brings back the shop mode meaning i think i played two online matches I won one, lost the other, and then I never played it again. Being that unlocks are all done through earning currency from playing other modes. Even the story mode gives you currency after every fight, which is actually really yep. nice. Unfortunately, like I briefly mentioned at the beginning of the video, the grind really does rear its head here. These games are just super grindy if you want to unlock everything. I mean, it'd be less fun if you unlocked everything in you like gotta unlock the hour. But through, it can feel kind of excessive. I guess wild. it's still better than microtransactions, though. I'm sort of torn on whether or not I like the shop or just unlocking things there you random. go finally an action combo I'm so that one wasn't just pressing b that one you had to press a midstream sort of torn so on whether or not he pressed a right i like there. the shop the, or just unlocking Bullshit. things randomly better like while unlocking things i'm thinking itachi is this man things randomly can feel rewarding at least with the shop you know exactly how something. much you need to grind to get the thing you want I'm all, at the man. same Show time knowing how much you need to grind might lead to even faster burnout still maybe the shop is a better way of doing this in the long run but i don't know what do you think let me know in the comments Bro, Kisame's like, get that shit out of here. Is a shop <laughs> better or is unlocking things randomly through other modes better? Anyways, as the send off for the Clash of Ninja. The shop versus random unlocks, I'd say the. The random unlocks are fun because you probably don't even go, like, when you first get the game, you probably, like, go straight into story mode. Maybe go into versus mode, but I would go straight into story mode and then you just unlock it through there. The shop system. Say I do the same thing, I go through straight through story mode, but nothing's unlocked, so now I have to spend the money to choose what I want. But how do I know who's good? I pretty much would just pick who I've used in the story mode or pick somebody that I, I think is cool. Like, if you go through that character list and you see Toa, who the hell is Toa? I never heard no Naruto character named Toa. You know what I'm saying? Unless you play Clash of Ninja Revolution 2, and you know that's the Ambu Black Ops character. So I think the random unlocks personally would be better. Ninja series in the West. I think this game is a and not even random unlocks, progression unlocks. So if you get stuck trying to figure out how to unlock somebody, look it up online. Oh, to unlock 
Kabuto, you have to do score attack on the third difficulty. Okay, now I know. Fine game to do it with. The systems feel like a natural evolution of the systems the series has established up to this point, and I think that overall, it's a great game. The only thing I wish it had was the option to play as pre-time skip characters. I know that this would essentially double the double. roster for basically no reason, but I don't see any reason to not have those characters since they're already there anyways. I know, it's not as easy as just bringing them over, but if there ever were another Clash of Ninja game in the future, which I think there should be, I would love to see That'd be this. Dope if there was. Naruto Shippuden Gekito Ninja Tyson EX was released on the Wii in 2006. Exclu We're diving into unfamiliar territory here. Exclusively in Japan. So here's where the timeline gets a little bit confusing. While the West was getting the Revolution series, Japan uh -huh. was getting Gekito Ninja Tyson EX. These releases were happening in parallel, and some of the games took features from others, and they basically piggybacked off of each other. Because of this, I probably won't be spending as much time on each entry, and instead focusing on what makes this each one Sufiyomi. unique, oh, well. as most of the new features are going to be things that we've actually seen before. So visually, you probably noticed, this game goes back to the 4-3 non-widescreen aspect ratio, but to be fair, we did just jump back to 2006. When it comes to widescreen and this, what is this, 6x3 or something like that, I think now that I've gotten older, I enjoy it. I'm fine with it. You know, back in the day, it was like, oh, why isn't this in widescreen? Like, even with anime, like Dragon Ball Z, when they started re-releasing them and they started releasing them in widescreen, I think it's starting to rub off on me just to have the original, like, 6x3 or whatever this is called, or 16x3, I'm not too sure. The graphics look just as good as ever, though. Gameplay-wise, this feels really similar to the jump from Clash of Ninja to Clash of Ninja Revolution. The stage obstacles and the stage transitions are here, but notably, there are no paper bombs in any of the EX games. But okay. based on the timelines of release and the features in these games, it looks like, for the most part, Revolution would take features that were introduced in the EX games, and they kind of just piggybacked from there. Something weird that this game does is kind of force the weird special move we remote waggle on you, even if you're using a GameCube controller. In the That's settings, weird. you can change the input to button inputs, and I think just using the sticks does the trick here, but I definitely would prefer just being able to disable this entirely. Story mode in this game covers through most of the Kazekage rescue arc from Shippuden, which we also saw in Revolution 3. Yeah, the first game in this series covers the same material as the final game from the Revolution series. So I assume because the, the West go? was behind on the anime, so it probably made a lot more sense at the time, but I don't know. Looking at this story mode versus Revolution 3's, this one uses 2D artwork exclusively to tell the story, rather than using the 3D models and on the bad the 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 bad 3D like bad for like 2022 bad 3D models or artwork I think I prefer the 3D models. Honestly, I'm kind of here for it. It's pretty cool seeing the same it story told bad, in two different it's... ways through what is essentially the same series like this. And I imagine that this isn't an experience you could usually have with a lot of other game series. I do like this presentation a lot, and mm, I think there's more good. artwork than even the last time one. we saw this style used. This game also has the mini game mode, but oh, these no. are the exact same mini games from Clash of Ninja Revolution 1, just with the ship it in versions of the characters. Otherwise, they're identical. This is kind of an interesting peek into how much hey, the developers got put better. into trying to give both the Japanese and Western audiences the same features just in different games. The fact that they went out of their way to adapt it this way actually makes me gain a lot of respect I'm not lie, this mini game is tough. for them. Overall though, this really does feel a lot like the first Revolution game feature-wise, just with Shippuden characters. I enjoyed my time with it, but I'm gonna be honest, I didn't spend all that much time with it after playing through the story mode. At this point in the series, I'm really just looking for new and interesting yeah. things or just different things things because bro you just played the same game like five six seven times i don't blame you Naruto Shippuden Gekito uh, Ninja Tyson EX2 was released for the Wii in 2007. This game is, uh, basically just the last game I just covered. Like, I'm talking, this game feels like they just updated the story mode and removed the minigames. I know okay. that a lot more probably went into it, but it really does feel like something you'd see in, I don't know, an expansion Get update confused. in a modern game. Just packaged by around. itself. The story. 
Man, they're taking a lot of damage, bro. He he hit like maybe like three and a half You'd combos. See an, I don't know an expansion and update in a Itachi's modern health game. Is just not packaged going down. by itself. The story mode in this one is almost identical in presentation to the previous one and covers up until around the Tenchi Bridge arc. Unfortunately, half so the story mode is just the, the Kazekage Kage rescue oh arc God. once again, though. No At way. this point, I do think these no games way. would benefit from the Ultimate Ninja style of storytelling, yeah, where the next continue. game picks up yes. from where the last game left off. But I also 100%. understand that these games were probably adapting as much as they could up to where the story was, at least in the anime. Something the story mode does that sets it apart from previous ones is the occasional story choice between what character you want to use in certain missions. That's While this dope. doesn't overall affect the story mode too much, it is nice to give you some player agency here rather than to force you to use a specific character. Also, this guy versus guy fight returns, so I guess dope. technically now I have seen it before. You also get the option to do another clone fight with the character of your choice, so that's kind of cool too. I will dope. say though that doing one of these fights one after another kind of almost makes it feel like it Air overstays ball. its welcome, but just almost. One fun thing about this game is the addition of free time skip Naruto and Sasuke in the versus modes. This That's is something dope. I mentioned previously wanting, and while it's not for everyone, I'll still take it. I imagine that they were brought over from Revolution since it was released around the same time as this game, and the work of getting the characters into this engine was already done. One thing I did notice that's kind of weird though is that it's almost like their character models stretch and get bigger when they're not just standing. Just take a look at this. His body is definitely longer than it was when he was standing, right? I know why they did this, but it still kind of looks hilarious. Finally, unless I somehow missed this in the last game, this game brought back the gallery mode, which lets you view all of the images from the story mode. While I am a bit indifferent on unlocking things that we've already seen, it doesn't hurt to have options. Anime. Overall, I think I can use that same word to describe mm. how I felt about this game. Just indifferent. I don't feel like it added anything significant to the series, and it really just felt like a stepping stone. Let's hope EX3 brings something new to the table. Naruto Shippuden Gekito Ninja Taisen EX3 was released for the week. So I was so confused in uh, Clash of Ninja Revolution t uh, 3 when we got uh, Hidan and Kakuzu because at, to that point, I'd never seen that. Like, like I said, I didn't even get to the Kaze Kage rescue arc. So when I played the story mode, all it did was go through the rescue arc. So when I saw Kakuzu and Hidan, I didn't know what the hell was going on. So when I played as Hidan, I was like, oh, this is cool. And then I pressed down A and, you know, he does the little circle to activate his uh, curse stage. And I was like, what the hell is this? And what do I do with this? <laughs> like, I don't know what's going on. Kakuzu was way more straightforward. <laughs> in 2008. All right, so while all of these games had pretty decent intro videos, this one goes especially hard, and I wanted to call special attention to it. This is a really cool intro. So yeah, presentation-wise, this game this again is very similar to EX2, and by extension, EX1. In fact, I've been showing you the main menu for EX2 this whole time. This oh. is the main menu for <laughs> EX3. Gotcha! <laughs> This actually brings yeah, me to a did. point that I'm trying to make. The Revolution games were pretty similar across each game, but they also shook up the presentation a bit across the series too. These games are comfortable just, I guess, reusing assets for the presentation. And while I can't knock them for not wanting to make new UI elements from scratch every time, especially when these releases were only a year apart, I think I would feel only a little a bit year? burned oh, if I just put God. a bunch of time into EX2, Good waited round, a year for the new Jiraiya. game, and then launched Classic. it for the first time to see that it Good. was functionally Jiraiya. identical, oh at least God. at first glance. He Anyways, now that I've done that whole rank, And he's actually putting his combos with a special, not just wild special. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Another good one is uh, doing that combo into Dark Swamp, and then when they come down, then you do your special. That it was That's functionally identical, at least at first glance. Anyway, Which is weird. How come you do Dark Swamp, they go through the ground and come out of the sky? I don't understand. Now that I've done that <laughs> whole rant, let's take a look at this game's story mode that is completely different from anything what this series has ever that? done before. That this reminds me of the PS2 Naruto, the, the one the one where you play with Naruto and then you can get like a side character, like you can get Choji as a backup character and then you get Shikamaru. I think that story is also not that. That's right. This is a third That's person beat em up that Dynasty almost Warriors? feels like a Dynasty Warriors game. The controls are similar to the controls in the normal fights, but the jump button is bound to the right trigger and the left trigger centers the camera. Speaking of the camera, it cannot be manually moved, not even with the C stick on the GameCube oh controller. God. You can click in the trigger to center it behind you, but that's it. That There's not help. even a lock on button to keep it focused on any specific 
enemy, and that That's does terrible. make this feel a bit janky to play sometimes. Otherwise, though, this really is a breath of fresh air. The playable characters all seem to have movesets similar to their standard ones, but with some adjustments to make them work in this new gameplay style. The goal is to defeat enemies as you make your way to the mission objective area. You can run around freely and, if you want, ignore enemies as they pile up behind you since the game seems to only be able to render a handful at a time. The maps are all gigantic mazes and you end up spending a bunch of time just kind of figuring out they where to go while inevitably just running past most of the enemies because you got bored, at least if you're anything like me. In one mission though, you have to run to certain checkpoints with high-powered enemies before you can complete the mission and this was actually a nice little shakeup to the formula. It was especially welcome because while this mode is a cool fresh experience after the previous story modes, it does get a bit repetitive pretty quickly. Sometimes mm. there will be standard one-on-one -on -one I ain't gonna lie, I got bored just watching it. ...in the series <laughs> traditional style interspersed between these Naruto Warriors gameplay segments, but a vast majority of the story is just beat em up city. Once you complete the story mode, you unlock the ability to replay the story missions as characters that you've unlocked in the shop. Speaking of, the shop is back and it's made up entirely of just purchasable characters. They can be bought for both use in the versus modes and separately for use in the story missions. These Outside of that, this game it, brings homie. in the tag out system where you can swap characters at any time at the cost of chakra. Unfortunately, this can only really be taken advantage of in the non-story modes, which are all basically just the same modes that we- He's using combos into his special. I like to see Outside the Outside of that, it feels, well, like it the previous Lotus. games. They added in a low HP stat boost system that I actually forgot to mention was in the Revolution games. Oh, you basically, out, when you're at low we HP, your die. character begins glowing and they get a stat boost, and I Wild believe special. for some characters, it also opens up a special transformation. Oh, is this Other than those couple of additions, though, it feels like it plays just like the previous games. Overall, I'm pretty glad that this game took a chance to shake Bro, up the formula. The highlight is definitely the new story mode mechanics, and it felt like a nice palate cleanser after playing fight after fight after fight in the previous story modes. Of course, it did get a bit repetitive to play over time, and it's not a masterpiece or anything, but it's a fun little Dynasty Warriors-esque mode, and it definitely reminds me of the story mode in Ultimate Ninja Impact on the PSP. Okay, next. Naruto Shippuden, Gekito Ninja Tyson. There he is. There he is. Special was released That's who I was waiting for the on. Wii in 2010. This is the final is Gekito Ninja Tyson game ever made is and is also I the saw. most recent in the entire series to be released in any region. This game finally completely updates the UI and presentation a bit and honestly, it's pretty clean. You can tell this is a way more modern UI. Ooh, it's also like a mix of the old school. And I think the two year gap from the last release probably had something to do with it. Gameplay wise, this game does a few things differently. For starters, there's now a dedicated substitution meters? gauge, sort of like in the Ultimate Ninja Story. Bro, you got chakra, health, substitution is now on a meter? It's not shared with chakra? Oh, man. games, meaning that substitutions okay. no longer use chakra. I like this change because now you can actually sprinkle in your special moves after dodging an enemy attack rather than oh, being forced attack. to choose whether or not Kick. to use a substitution or punch, take a bunch of damage so that you can maybe other. get your special out. A side effect of this though is that it feels like you get your substitution way less often. Also, character switching now uses this gauge too, though I think oh, that's man. a more reasonable trade-off for the same reasons I just explained. A huge change is that stage transitions are totally gone. I'm not what? sure why they chose to do this, as I thought the stage transitions were a pretty fun dynamic element to these games that gave all of the stages a bit more variety. You can still, like, slam people into walls, but I still think I prefer the stage transitions. It also looks like the stage obstacles that you can hide behind are completely removed too. What's nice though is that there are a few new stages, and the stages look nice and way more detailed than previous stages, so I guess it's a welcome change. So Another change is the removal now. of the visible guard crush meter. While guard crush is still in the game, the meter is just gone. I assume okay. this was to declutter the UI with the addition of the substitution gauge, and I understand why they did this, but I still liked having the guard crush meter. The weird waggle movements that you can't disable during special moves Combos actually in match your input device this time, making it way more clear what you're supposed to be pressing. I do still wish you could disable this entirely, though, because honestly, I like watching the scenes rather than staring at the bottom of the screen waiting for waggle input prompts. This game doesn't have an actual story mode Mario this time, Party? and instead features a single-player progression mode where every character has their own board game-like path. 
Every space on the path is an encounter, and every encounter has three possible points you can earn. The primary points are just basically for winning the fight, with the additional two points being extra objectives like winning under a certain time limit or keeping a certain amount of HP. There's also sometimes special challenges like this one with Sasuke, where you have to defeat five single hit enemies without getting hit one time. As you earn okay. points, extra paths open up with access to emblems, titles, and various items for stuff like the sound player mode. I assume the emblems and titles are meant for the online play, but unfortunately Unfortunately, I wasn't actually able to play this game online. My favorite thing about this game, though, is just how big the cast is. There's all sorts of characters to choose from, and interestingly, it feels like a lot of them got a big moveset refresh. Characters like Sasuke feel way more fun to play, and a lot of the characters Sage even got Naruto. brand new special moves. They've also added some new characters like Sage Mode Naruto okay. and Minato, both of whom are ridiculously overpowered. Overall, though, gameplay-wise and visually, this game... If Minato's in your Naruto game, he's got to be overpowered. Feels he's overpowered in every ninja Naruto game. Just really good to play, even with all of the feature changes and removals. It's Dude's the final game around. in the series, and it definitely feels like a good send-off, even if there was more content they could have covered. At the end of the day, though, this is still fun, and I didn't even really miss the story mode. What's there is essentially what you'd get with a story mode anyways, just without cutscenes. So looking at this whole series, you can see else? the progress that was made in the systems and the evolution of the combat mechanics. Of yep. course, there are I can see your progression as well, brother. Minor gameplay details that I probably either skimmed over or just somehow missed. But if I did a deep dive of every game, these videos would be multiple hours long. One thing I do think is worth mentioning is the fact that some characters were weirdly country exclusive, but I wasn't really sure. So they were locking Minato. Bro, my heart broke. Where to include that since I didn't really focus on the rosters too much in these videos. Bro, that's heartbreaking. So I, I beat the mission mode in, Ninja, in uh, Clash of Ninja Revolution 1 on the hardest difficulty for nothing. Anyways, playing these games back to back, sometimes I would forget yeah. that I had moved on to another game. In fact, there was one <laughs> point where I'd accidentally mixed up all of my footage, and the only way I could tell two of the games was apart the was by bars. comparing their aspect ratios. While the games are still good games, I think that this is a series where you should probably figure out which game is the best for you and stick with that one. In my opinion, I think my Revolution favorites are a toss up between three. Clash of Ninja Revolution 3 and Gekito Ninja Tyson Special. Of course, I'm not a hardcore competitive player or anything, so I'm coming at this with a slightly different perspective. I know that Gekito Ninja Tyson 4 on the GameCube had sort of a competitive scene based on what I've read online, but do. I'm not sure if that's even still around in any significant way. I don't know. After the, Before the pandemic, I saw there was a video that last time I saw a video of it, it was released like six months. And I think they had one at like CEL 2021 or something like that. So it's still around. Either way, these games are fun and I enjoyed my time with them. I and I think everybody picks Haku and Itachi, right? I saw a Haku player doing like this crystal, like just like you jump in the air and you press A for your, your shuriken. Well, for Haku, it'd be the Senbon needles. But if you hold A, you use some chakra to keep them aimed at the opponent. When you let go, it goes to them. But he was doing an, invinci an, an, an invincible where he just kept jumping in the air, throwing it. Throwing it, it was a just frame invincible. I was like, dude, that's cheesy as hell, but it takes a lot of skill. So I just think I'm gonna take another break from Naruto games for a little while. I don't blame you. And brother. that's it. Thank you so much for watching. This video especially was a time sink, and your support 100%. makes it all worth it. I'm already at work on the next video, and this one is gonna be Bro, take a break. Holy sort crap. of along the lines of the game I just played, but different but in game? one really specific way. You'll see. All right, we'll see. Well, when that comes out, we will see. But yeah, it's a great video. Definitely link link down below. Check it out and check out the first one. I already saw this one, so I'm not going to react to it. But part one is also really good. I think you guys should check it out. I think you guys should subscribe to him as well. He's almost at 100K. Help him out. It's your boy, Miss. Come on, subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.